Hello, dear students. Welcome to our grammar lesson. This week, we are going to cover two grammar lessons. The first one is figurative language, and the second will be about pronouns. In this PowerPoint presentation, by the end of it, you will recognize the meaning of figurative language, to figure out the types of figurative language, to know the difference between simile, metaphor, alliteration, and idioms. And you have down here the link that contains the comparison between similes and metaphors, so that you can make a pause in order to write down the link or you can take a photo of it so by the end of the lesson you can surf on internet and to get some exercises through this link. What's a figurative language? Whenever you describe something by comparing it with something else, you are using figurative language. And you will find different types of figurative language that you can find it in your writing. You can use figurative language in your writing in order to make varieties of your sentence structure, to make your writing so rich one. First of all, simile, a figure of speech which involves a direct comparison between two unlike things, usually with the words like or as. For example, the muscles on his bony arms are strong as iron bands. Another example, he is as strong as a lion. So simile is that to use two comparing things by using like or as. Good coffee is like friendship, rich, warm, and strong. This is another example for simile. So I can use, for example, as faithful as a dog. When you compare a person and you want to say that he is loyal, he is faithful, so you will say as plus adjective plus as plus the item or the object that you are comparing it to. When you say that this person or for example his presence is as punctual as a clock, as a ferocious as a tiger, fierce one, as big as an elephant. So this is the usage of simile and if you use like you are not going to say like like or like an as. The second one, metaphor. A figure of speech that compares two unlike things, but without using the words like or as, and states the comparison as if it were a fact. What do I mean by this? As an example, the conductor's voice was a bass drum echoing throughout the car. You are the light in my life. Love is a lie. Each one of these examples comparing something to something else but without using as or like. So you will understand it as if that there is as or like here in the sentence, but it's omitted. When I say you are the light in my life, it means that you are presence or your appearance or your essence is very important to me exactly like the light in my life when i say that love is a lie especially when i passed by a miserable experience and then i say that love is a lie so as if that you compare love to a lie When I say the conductor's voice was a bass drum echoing throughout the car, so his voice is so harsh and echoing and has an echo in my ears, exactly like the echoing of the car. Third one, personification. A figure of speech which gives the qualities of a person to an animal, an object, or an idea. So when I say that the wind yells while blowing, so as if that the wind is a human being, 
I give him, I give the wind one of the features of the human being blowing or yelling. Okay. So when I say that the wind yells, it means that it's like the person who is yelling. So you will ask me what's the difference between it and simile or metaphor. It's not a simile. It's not only because that I don't use as or as. And it's not a metaphor because it's not comparing something to something else. It's totally different. Now, please concentrate. Personification means when I personify an object as a human being. So when I say the wind yells, so who is yelling? The human being. So when I say that wind yells, so I personify the wind as a human being and give the wind one of the features of the human being features as to shout or yell. So when I say that the wind yells, exactly like when I say that the human being or the person yells, that's why it's a personification. So the wind cannot yell. Only a living thing can yell. Here are some other personification examples to make the idea clearer. The wind whistled against my cheeks. So who is whistling? The human being. So when I personify the wind and gives the wind one of the features of the human being and say that the wind whistled, so this means that I personified. I give a personification message to the people that the wind is whistling. The sun greeted me this morning. Who is greeting? Who is doing this action? It's actually a human being. So meanwhile, I find that the sun greeted me this morning as if that say, hi, it's sunny today. So I personify the sun, like the human being who is greeting me. Now the flowers begged for water. When I say, when I say that the flowers begged, so I give here also another feature for the flowers, as if that it's a human being who is begging for water. The wind screamed as it raced around the house. The same like yell, who is screaming, the human being. So the wind screamed exactly like the human being screamed. Lightning danced across the sky. So when I say lightning danced, so I give lightning one of the features of the human being who is dancing. I personify lightning as a human being in order to give it one of the features of dancing. Trees bow to the ground. It's only the knight, for example, who's doing this action in front of the king. The carved pumpkin smiled at me. Who is smiling? The human being. So I personified and give the pumpkin some of the features, like, for example, smiling and at that time, it's called as a personification. Alliteration. Alliteration means repeated consonant sounds occurring at the beginning of words or within words. For example, she was wide-eyed and wondering why she waited for Walter to wake him. The W here is a consonant sound. And it's already repeated. So when I find the beginning of a sound on each word and it has the same consonant sound. When I say consonant sound here, I mean you cannot find wide, while, Walter. And for example, you will say um, any other W which is silent. And you say that this is now kind of consonant sound. Another example, I cannot say, for example, sun, sea, shine. I cannot say that shine is one of the alliteration 
because when I pronounce it, I pronounce it as sh. So it's only sun and c because they have the same consonant sound that start in the beginning of the sentence or the word. Here are some other alliteration examples for you. Carries, cat, Chloe, her couch, creating chaos. Now you can make, for example, a pose and then you can circle the letters that have the same consonant sound in each sentence. Make a pose and start now to answer what I'm asking you to do right now. Come on, hurry up. Great. And now, with idioms. An idiom or idiomatic expression refers to a construction or expression in one language that cannot be matched or directly translated word for word in another language. Now we covered idioms before inside the classroom and we did a lot of idioms in the copybooks and we focused on them in the activity book and in the learner's book as well. Again, idioms means that what I'm saying doesn't literally mean what I'm talking now about. Like for example, when I say don't judge the book from its cover don't judge the book by its cover so this means that i'm not really asking you about a real book no when i just ask you about um, what do you think um what do you think about uh, the character of uh, nelly so you will tell me that i don't think that she's um, a really helpful person so I'm asking you, why did you contact with her? Did you ask her to do something for you? You will tell me, no, I think that she looks like that. So I'm going to tell you, don't judge a book from its cover or by its cover. Okay? Here are some idioms, examples for you. You can follow up with me. You should keep your eye out for him. This is when I just want you to take care of somebody. To keep an eye out for someone means to watch out for them. Okay? So this is the meaning of it. To watch out for them. Thank you. Don't forget, please, to look at all the objectives that we did with each other in the beginning of this PowerPoint presentation. And do the exercises that you can found in the references in the booklet and in the activity book as well thank you very much bye